There simply is not relocation housing. We can no longer proceed with redevelopment like we have in the past. We can't move people into vacant housing and then 15 years later replace that housing. It has to be replaced before it's ever torn down in a time of a housing crisis. There is no doubt in my mind that if the people in Pico Union had not organized, that they would be gone, that they would be gone, that they would have no defense against the CRA in, in, their, in their attempt to move them out of their community. That community would have been dispersed. I'm talking to all of you council members in Pico Union, just like Javier spoke before. We are aware of your interest, your big business interest. We have seen in the past with Chavez Ravin, we have learned. In 1950, 1952, I was then assistant director of the Housing Authority of the City of LA in charge of helping to select sites for a $110 million housing program that would have provided decent housing for people who were then living in slums at low rent and without racial discrimination and to use the land where many of these people had been crowded use it properly for trucking, industrial, manufacturing. We're filming this today in the height of Chavez Ravine. Behind me, you can see the city of LA. Off to your left, you'll see Chavez Ravine and the Dodger ballpark. The ballpark was never supposed to have been built there. Rather, a beautiful housing project designed by Richard Neutra and Robert Alexander. I'm from the, uh, one of the first families that came to live in Chavez Ravine. My grandparents bought at, uh, two lots at the turn of the century. I was born on uh, 1720 Bishop Road, that's between first and second base. We sacrificed because when we moved over here in Palo Verde, there was only six houses in 1921. My father was a carpenter. I was a carpenter with him. We built all the houses in Palo Verde, my, my father and I. We are we're all one have a whole happy family like we are here today. I miss my neighborhood. I miss my barrio and the people. It was a, a community, a very lovable community. Everybody was related. And I mean, if you weren't a sister, you were an aunt. If you weren't an aunt, you were a comadre, comadre, a nina. Well, they came, the Dodgers came and they took our whole property away from us. How did they do that? What did they... Well, they said they were going to make a, a low home uh, housing project, and they never did. All of that program was brought to a halt in 1952 when the hysteria around the Red Hunt of the late 40s and 50s was used by the real estate lobby together with the Los Angeles Police Department to try to destroy this housing program and ultimately to turn this beautiful site away from the housing of people who needed housing, low-income people, 
and turn it rather into some other project such as we have in the Dodger ballpark. But now let's deal with the people who were here and who had been promised homes. Then we'd gone to each of these families in both Spanish and English, explaining to them if they would move, and many of them were tenants, if they would move, we would provide them a temporary home while the new project was built. And then they would have first claim to come back into this beautiful Chavez Ravine area to get a home, as many bedrooms as they wanted, rents beginning as low as $12 a month, all utilities paid, and above all, absolutely no discrimination toward race or nationality. So these people listened to us and they believed us as we were telling an honest story. What happened then was the people had already been moved. The land had been cleared. The bulldozers were up here getting ready for housing. And these people with their piece of paper promising their right were completely shortcutted. They were betrayed. The way they took our homes away from us, it wasn't right. Yeah. Dodger Stadium, I've never been there to a ball game. What do we have? The stadium? Just a little plan. What do we have here? Swing. Nothing. <laughs> Actually, they just put us up for nothing. Actually, and we were a left. happy people living together, trying things. to get along. Maybe if we would have gotten out together, we would have done something about it. But we were all timid and we were all afraid. It's a neighborhood, it's a cohesive neighborhood. There's organization going on here. CES was organizing. It was, it was absolutely ripe for a legal struggle. We are like a big family. Now everybody knows uh, uh, everybody. We go into their home, they come into ours. What happened was that the residents in this neighborhood started getting notices were telling them that their housing was going to be condemned and that they had to move. We, the poor people, want to live in Pico Union. We don't, go out, we don't want to go outside from the community. We don't want to lose our homes for the benefit of pet boys. What the CRA is doing in Pico Union is destroying our homes, our family, and our dignity. They are going to, uh, to acquire the property and uh, demolish it for, uh, for uh, Pep Boys. I mean, so Pep Boys can expand their business in the area. Pep Boys was, to, was going to be subsidized over one and a half million dollars of tax funds. And we thought it was incredible because uh, we understand those tax dollars should be used for the rehabilitation of the, the properties mm -hmm. to build low-income housing. In the very early years of the, uh, the PICO II redevelopment project, that would have been in 1976 and 1977, uh, the Pep Boys Automotive Store, which incidentally is the, uh, the original Pep Boys store on the west coast of this country and still today houses the regional offices of Pep Boys, 
uh, found that they had uh, run out of space, the buildings were getting old in which they were operating down in Washington, and they made the decision that they were either going to have to uh, expand their business within the Pico Union neighborhood or they were going to move out of the neighborhood and relocate. The decision was made that the agency would assist both the broader community and uh, Pep Boys uh, in acquiring additional land uh, so they could build new buildings and could remain in the community. Now, two major reasons for uh, this decision is that Pep Boys is a very important economic uh, element within the community and also provides a significant number of jobs. We found this particular project interesting because what city watchers are finding is that there seems to be a corridor from Little Tokyo, Chinatown, all the way through USC of intensive commercial development. And that commercial development basically consists of putting an economic anchor in every community. A uh, large commercial enterprise, a new Otani Hotel, a Pep Boys Western Regional Headquarters. And once that's in, the theory is that that economic anchor will bring added revenue to the community, will on its own promote housing, will raise property taxes, but there are two problems with that. And one is that the low-income residents who've lived in those communities, just like right here in this community, are forced out. And the second problem is, is that no one really knows if the economic anchor theory works. Well, we never heard of CRA until they um, sent us an offer through the mail. Uh, they wanted to acquire the property mm -hmm. for the expansion of pet boys. If when they uh, send us a letter to acquire the property, then uh, we refuse their offer. So they send us the final uh, notice, and because we refused once again, then they went through court and uh, condemned the property. They got it through eminent domain. We had to go to legal advice, going from one lawyer to another one, to see if there was any way we could uh, save the property. All of them uh, would say that they had the <coughs> community redevelopment had the power to get the property through eminent domain. CES organized the people in the community into an organization called People United to Save Our Community to act as a vehicle to develop a strategy to confront the Community Redevelopment Agency. We also worked in conjunction with Legal Aid and developed a two-prong type of approach to stave off the evictions and to win some concessions for the people in the community. And that strategy included a legal approach as well as a political strategy. It's just low-income people that is going to be affected. And who is going to be benefit is uh, Pep Boys, a multi-million corporation. Can't you find another house? Yes. Another place to live? Well, you can find really places, point. but for triple the rent, see? And why should it always be the poor people that pay for these injustices? We need to quit being divided over black and brown. The, the, the low-income people in the brown community are suffering from housing displacement, as in Pico Union. They are building million-dollar corporations and expanding them. And I don't know, maybe they're getting ready for the Olympics. So we have got to say, let's unite. And let's not be divided as poor people, because we're all poor. Let's rise together. The Redevelopment Agency is, is basically a responsive agency in the sense that we do not uh, go throughout the city of Los Angeles and identify neighborhoods that uh, we think should uh, receive our services in, in terms of redevelopment or revitalization. Uh, we respond to the city council. Let's take a look at the way redevelopment has always proceeded in this city. It's a scandal. We see constantly, we have seen it time and time again. We have seen it at Bunker Hill. We saw it at Temple Bowdry. We have seen massive numbers of units of housing destroyed to facilitate the acceleration of a commercial interest. Pep Boys is just another one. We saw it happen. We've seen it happen time and time again in this city. And the housing that's going up downtown right now is Bunker Hill replacement housing. And let me remind you when the Bunker Hill housing was torn down 15 years ago. One of the trademarks of our organization is the fact that we've borrowed the tactics of the labor movement, of the civil rights movement, and that it's been very successful 
in our organizing strategies over the years. And we utilize this in Pico Union, and that is one of direct action. We think it's very, very important for our people to participate in <coughs> fighting around issues that affects you know, their lives. Yo soy la señora Lorenza Herrera y tenía 14 años viviendo en la Washington y Hoover. Uh, we have lived in this place for one year and uh, we moved here in this area to get closer to Michael's uh, uh, school, which is Salvin's Handicap School. Pero un día uh, nos llegó un papel que Pet Boys había comprado y teníamos que desalojar la casa. Y, y entonces este, empezó, empezamos a buscar casa porque ellos nos exigían que teníamos que dejar la casa para un cierto término, si no, nos teníamos que ver nosotros en problemas. There was no warning ahead of time and they just came in and said, well, we, your, your house is right where the development uh, program is and that's it, your house will be acquired in the mallers. Y como nunca habíamos estado en, en, en problemas de casa, nos vimos obligados a buscar, a buscar casa donde nos fuera posible. Y, y encontramos muy lejos de, de mi trabajo y muy lejos de Los Ángeles. In this property we are pay, paying 267, 267 a month. And now in my two, in our two bedroom house right now, we're pay, paying 506 a month. That's almost double the payments that we are doing right now. And that's really giving us uh, a, it's, it's a burden. Uh, nosotros pagábamos 65 dólares por, por un tiempo y después nos subió la renta. Uh, el Banco de América nos subió la renta y, y dimos 75 dólares. Fue después el pago. ¿Y hoy paga cuánto? A hoy estoy pagando 422 dólares con 50 centavos, cosa que es muy duro para mí y para toda la familia que es pequeña aquí y, y no podemos nosotros con estos gastos de esta casa. You know, I used to help out in the house and I didn't really have to give that much, but now it seems like, you know, more than half of the contribution is left up to me. So like even if I plan to, you know, make go or make some plans for myself, I have to stop and think about what's going to happen to my mom first. Almost every penny of the public money went to the property owners whose property was bought for the new Pep Boys facility. Uh, so that uh, the, the, the tenants and the property owners and the site in which the Pep Boys facilities will be built uh, were in fact the recipients of those public dollars as we bought their property and as we provided uh, relocation resources. In some cases we actually picked up existing property and moved it to another place in the, in the uh, community. The alternative that I asked them to is uh, to move my, uh, my house in uh, some of the vacant lots, which they have a lot around in this neighborhood. And they said they cannot do that. It's too expensive for them to do that. But one thing is when after we signed the papers and all this thing, it was entirely a lie because they came back and uh, and uh, they said that they're going to move the house to some other place. So, which is actually now they have moved the house in a block away from here. We saw three attorneys. I think we're ready to give up, you know, and uh, signing the papers for CRE. Then my husband. You know, we would talk at night and he would say, gee, there, there must be a way that, uh, you know, the people have some rights, mm -hmm. even though uh, legally we couldn't do anything. And a friend of ours, uh, he saw uh, in the newspaper an article about the Coalition for Economical Survival. So we called them and they came here, talked to the neighbors, to the owners. So this is how we got involved with CES. The most important strategy in Pico Union, of, of course, was the formation of PUSAC. I mean, no community struggle 
can be successful in the absence of organization. So that was primary, the formation of People United to Save Our Community. First of all, uh, we had to organize the community. We form a committee, Chair Pearson, Secretary. For the first time after talking with CS, we felt uh, strong. We were not afraid anymore. After talking to them, they gave us strength that, you know, we the people have some rights. The thing is that uh, most of the people like us, uh, we've never been educated. Nobody has taught us how to, to, to fight for our rights. There's a lot of problems in the community, but if the people don't come out of their homes and, and get together and, and speak out for their rights, uh, uh, they will never accomplish anything. The reason that we chose Pe Pep Boys, which was the cornerstone of the campaign, was that by doing a, a weekly boycott picket line in front of their stores, in front of their, I guess, six stores, it made them our ally in that they influenced the Community Redevelopment Agency to develop an equitable settlement for the people in Pico Union. Well, it meant that um, I have four children, my husband, I have the, uh, the job, and it meant that I would have to stop doing, you know, the things that I, I've been a housewife all my life. Um, there were many things that we would have to deprive ourselves because there were a lot of work in, in, in the organizing. It's, there's a lot of work involved. Well, at first I was all embarrassed over the picket line, you know? <laughs> Eee, wow. <laughs> like, I didn't know a lot of these things, you know? And, and, and going out there and fighting, it, was, it really taught me a lot. Now, the funding for the Pep Boys Project came basically from three sources. One from the, the uh, Community Development Block Grant Program, uh, which is the basic funding source for all public activities in the PICO project. And second, from an Urban Development Action Grant, uh, which was uh, directly from the feds to the city, specifically for this project. Uh, the third source of funding came from the Pep Boys Corporation itself. There's been approximately $2 million of block grant money spent on the project. Another $635,000 of the UDAG money and approximately $400,000 of Pep Boys money. The situation is, so long as this public hearing continues without a Spanish interpreter, it is out of compliance with the federal rules and regulations. So long as the city fails to adhere to the federal rules and regulations, the whole community amount block grant process is void. It means nothing, because you cannot develop communities without involving the people in those communities. That's the foundations of our government, that's the foundations of our democracy, and it seems to me that the city council ought to come back to the people instead of the people always coming down to the city council. Now, one thing I would like to propose to the audience here, due to the fact that this hearing is out of compliance, I would suggest that we all rise and we go over to the mayor's office and we ask for a meeting with the mayor because it's apparent that the city council is not interested Mr. President, in adhering I'd like to the rules. rise to point of order. What is your, what is your this point? man's completely out of order. He's talking to the right. audience and trying right. to invite them to go to All right, he's order. finished, Mr. Gibson. He's finished. We want to see the mayor. We want to see the mayor. Yeah, this is my third time we, here we, to see the mayor. We demand, we, to see the mayor. we demand to see the mayor. That's right. We have a right to talk with our representative. It has always been our uh, ob object to give ample opportunity for the people of this city to be heard, to take into account their views and to try to respond to them the best we can. The council set up five hearings in various parts of the city. This is one such hearing being held here tonight. Let's go, let's go, not the poor. Come on, give us a chance, man. How would you like your house torn down to extend? Come on, man, we like your power over here. This is Come on, help us. 
Entonces empezamos a hacer la, pre, la presión todas, todos juntos y con esa presión que hicimos fue como nos, nos dejaron un poco en paz. One of the most important benefits that PUSAC had was that CES was a citywide organization. We were able to bring the strength of our entire organization into that struggle. And due to the segregated nature of Los Angeles, it's very, very difficult to develop a, a multiracial balance in any one community. We also were involved in a number of other coalitions that were also working around the issue of low-cost affordable housing in, uh, in the city of Los Angeles, and they were able to add their strength and their resources in, into that fight. And so I think that this kind of unity, this kind of combination of, of forces was key and contributed to the resounding victory that we were able to achieve in that neighborhood. Uh, they offer us to lift up the units, move it to another lot, take care of the, uh, the moving expense, the rehab, and uh, also another lot with a, a house, a three-bedroom house, and also covering the lawyer's uh, expense and the appraiser's fee, which was over $3,000. The agency is in the process of completing the, the construction of new housing in the immediate surrounding community to replace every one of the units that were taken down for the Pep Boys project. I think that for the first time, community redevelopment has came up with good alternatives. And, uh, you know, if people start organizing and fighting for their rights, they can accomplish a lot more than we did. What they gave us has to be offered to everybody else, if not more. What we were doing, it was a right. Nobody could say it was wrong because it was, we were fighting for something that it was ours.